Good evening. Glad you could join me this evening for our Bible study. Take your Bibles, go to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse 18 this evening. I'll tell you what, it's difficult to self-video, and that's what I'm doing tonight, is self-videoing. But we're going to look at the book of Galatians. We've been studying the book of Galatians, and we're talking about walking in the Spirit. But tonight we're going to look at the law and the believer. The law and the believer. If you found your passage in Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. If you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Let's ask God's blessing before we start. Father, we count it a privilege to be here tonight. I pray that you challenge us in this passage. Encourage us to do what's right. Thank you again for the book of Galatians and a wonderful book that we could study tonight. May this encourage and challenge our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. The Law and the Believer. Hey, when I would go elk hunting out in Wyoming, you know I love to elk hunt. Love hunting. And uh, when we'd go elk hunting in Wyoming, we'd be up in the mountains. There were certain places that we had to go that were particularly challenging because we had to take a narrow path to get across an edge of the mountain. One I remember distinctly is it was a path about this wide and it was like a sheer drop off down quite a few, maybe three, four hundred yards down to the bottom. You had to keep your focus forward. Now a tendency on walking that path is to lean towards the mountain but then your feet could slip out and then you're down to the bottom quicker than you want to be. But what we would have to do is we'd focus on looking forward, keeping your eyes on the path forward, not looking down, not looking up, but just looking forward. As I think of that, we need to avoid the edge that will keep us from disaster situations. And I think of the edge of two things in this passage, legalism and license. The believer needs to avoid the extreme of legalism and the extreme of license. Now we're going to discuss this a little further, but let's get into this. Legalism robs a believer of the freedom that has been given in Christ. And he begins to believe that his salvation actually depends on observing or doing certain laws and regulations. Now that is not truth. Legalism is not the way you keep your salvation. Our salvation is depending on God. God's the one that gives it to us. God's the one that hangs on to it. God gives us that free gift of eternal life for all who will receive it. Nothing that we do can give us salvation. I think of Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. It says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Another passage is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 states, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified, how? By faith. So Galatians 5.18, as we look at it in our text this evening, it says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. We are never justified by our works of the law. We are only justified by faith in Jesus Christ. License or Antoniumism 
anti, against, nomos is law, being against the law, sets aside the law and implies that freedom in Christ is a permit to do as one pleases. Here's the idea. That because you've been saved and your sins have been forgiven, you can live any way you want to. That's not Bible. That's not scriptural. That's not truthful. This brings us to an important question that needs to be addressed. Since the believer is no longer under the law, what then is the relationship to this law? Is the law done away? Does it serve any function at all? We first must explain what it means ye are not under the law, as Galatians 5.18, last part says. Well, number one under here, we see it does not mean we can be insubordinate to authority. We are still to obey the laws of the land and the authority that is over us. We are to submit to civil and political authorities. In fact, Martin Luther states on the book of Galatians that God's law is actually what guides and governs civil and political ordinances. This civil restraint by the law is intended by God for the preservation of all things, particularly for the good of the gospel, that it should not be hindered too much by a tumult of wicked. The wicked. That's a good statement. Take your Bibles, go over to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, please. We'll look at verses 1 through 5. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says in verse 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not terrors to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must, in, must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. We are instructed to obey those who are in authority over us. Number two, secondly, not under the law does not mean that the law of God is in no effect. Take your Bibles. I hope you're still in Romans. Go to Romans chapter 3. Look at verses 1 through 5. Actually, Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Verse 19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law reveals to us the need to be justified by faith. It reveals to us the true condition, our true heart's condition. It lets us know of our sin. And then number three, thirdly, 
not under the law does not mean the believer is free from the standard of life. Contrary to popular opinion, the Ten Commandments have not become obsolete. God's moral law always has been and always will reflect His character. So the believer must live in light of God's character and eternal word. True Christianity is not freedom from the existence of the law. There is always a standard, always a code of conduct to be observed. Believers must realize this. I think of James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not forgetful here, but a doer of the word, or the work, this man shall be blessed in all his deeds. The only time a Christian does not obey the law is when man's laws go against God's word. That's the only time we were to not obey the law. I, I see an example found in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, if you want to turn there, I'll just quote it. Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 29, you maybe remember this account. But listen to what the, it says here. And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council. The high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. See, here's the example. They told them not to preach about Jesus Christ. They told them to, they, they are not to go out and proclaim and preach the truth of the gospel. But I love what Peter and the other disciples said. We ought to obey God rather than men. And folks, that's the only time we are allowed to break that law. We are to obey the laws of the land. This is God's will for us. But if the laws of the land go contrary to God's word, then we are to obey God. Our allegiance is to Christ and His word. Amen? That's the truth. Our allegiance is to Jesus Christ and His word. Now, God wants us to obey the laws of the land, but if they go contrary to his word, we follow God. It's a higher law. We looked at what it does, doesn't mean to not be under the law. So what does it mean then when we say you're not under the law? We go back to our text again because I don't want to confuse you here. Matthew, uh, not Matthew, Galatians chapter 5 verse 18. He says this, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So what does it mean? We looked at what it doesn't mean, but now what does it mean to not be under the law? Let's take a look at this. So what does it mean to not be under the law? First of all, the law is not a means of justification. Do you get that? The law is not... A means of justification. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 18, Paul contrasts being led of the Spirit with being under the law. What it is simply saying is that Christians are no longer required to live under the jurisdiction of the law, thereby facing the penalty of the law. Galatians 3.11 says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Before our salvation, the law condemned us with the reality that we were human, we're human beings, and our, our nature is so weak that we cannot keep God's law. 
So the judgment under the law is for every human. But in mercy, God sent his son to keep the law and uh, execute by mercy, God sent his son to keep the law and execute under the penalty of the law, was executed under the penalty of the law in our place. In other words, God sent his son to take our place. By grace, through faith, Jesus' own life becomes our life. His death becomes ours. After salvation, the believer is uh, severed from the laws. Righteousness demands the relationship of the believer to the law is completely different. God's Spirit is imparted unto the hearts and we're experienced uh, the presence of an ongoing relationship with the Spirit who enables us to walk in obedience to God's law. It's the Spirit of God at salvation helps us to obey the law of God. Spurgeon illustrates this. He explains this concept. What is God's law now? It is not above the Christian. It is under the Christian. Some men hold God's law like a rod in terror over Christians and say, if you sin, you will be punished with it. It is not so. The law is under a Christian. It is for him to walk on, to be his guide, his rule, his pattern. We are not under the law, but under grace. Praise the Lord. Law is the road which guides us, but not the rod which drives us, nor the spirit which acculates us or prods us. This law is good and excellent, and it keeps its place. By grace, through faith, we are no longer under condemnation of the law. Now through the indwelling spirit, we are enabled to do what we could not do in our fallen sinful state. Hey, this is great news. Aren't you thankful for God's grace? God's grace is bestowed upon us. We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. The law no longer holds us in condemnation. Sadly, however, many believers live with some feeling of condemnation when in fact the believer is not under the law. Romans, take your Bibles, go to Romans chapter 8. And Romans is a great book. But chapter 8 is a wonderful passage. Take a look at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We can rejoice in the good news of life in the Spirit. The law does not provide power of sanctification. The Christian life is not about trying harder to obey the law. It is realizing that we are enabled to obey God by the power of the indwelling Spirit of God. Only way we can 
obey God's law is by the Spirit that dwells in us. He enables us to do that. If we strive to keep God's law in our own flesh, we'll find ourselves miserably failing and falling into sin. Again, the flesh cannot in no way obey the law. This is the whole point of James chapter I mean, Galatians chapter 5. The only way to deal with the flesh is through the indwelling spirit, not by keeping the law. I hope this is an encouragement as we'll go on and study more about the book of Galatians. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God and the challenge. Lord, may we learn not to take these extremes of license or legalism. But Lord, we look at the richness of your word. By grace, you've given us and your mercy you've shown upon us. Bless every family that hears this. Encourage them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening tonight.